hi guys welcome back again to my youtube channel my name is Osereme. in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you guys how to make this beautiful wrap peplum top i went to church on sunday and got a lot of compliments as you can see it looks absolutely beautiful so if this is something you're interested in learning how to make i'll say keep on watching if you are still yet to subscribe please hit on the subscribe button and let's get started So guys, this is the fabric I intend to use and make this dress. If you want to be able to make this effortlessly, I would advise that you have about 3 yards of fabric. For me, I'm actually transforming an old dress that I made before into a top. So this old dress is what I'm using to make this top. And of course, I have black crepe here for me to be able to use for the neckline. So for the crepe, you need about half yard of fabric. So guys, let's go ahead and draft out the pattern on our pattern paper. I am going to be drafting out just the back pattern. So first thing I'm going to do is to draw a straight line across the top to serve as our starting line. From the starting line, I'm going to come down to my bust point, which is 10 inches, and I'm going to make a mark here. And also I will go down to my waist measurement, which is 15 inches and also make a mark. So I'll be stopping it here because I'm drafting a half scale uh, bodice. So up here, we have the shoulder line here. This is the bust line. And then lastly, we have the waistline here. The reason why we stopped at the waistline is because this is going to be a peplum top. So we are going to be having a flare from the waist. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my body measurements to this pattern. On the shoulder line here, I'm going to come in by three and a half inches for my neck width. I'm using three and a half inches here because I'm going to be having like a band-like collar all the way around. Okay, so I'll mark it here. Now for the neck depth, I would use two inches. So I'll mark it here and I'll use my French curve to create a round neckline. Now, still at this shoulder line here, I'm going to divide my shoulder measurement into two. Uh, my shoulder measurement divided by two is seven inches. So I'll make a mark here. And then for my shoulder slope, I'm going to come down by one inch. And from this new one inch point, I'll just draw a line to meet the top of my neckline. So once you're through with this, the next thing you want to do is get your armhole depth, which I normally do by dividing my bust measurement by 6 and adding 1.5 to it. So when I do that calculation, I get 7 inches. So I just marked the 7 inches point from the shoulder slope that we got earlier, drew a line across and labeled it the chest line. So now I'm going to be connecting a line from the shoulder slope down to meet the chest line here, like this. So go ahead and do the same thing. Now I will take a measurement from the top of my shoulder slope down to the chest line and I'm going to get the midpoint. So my midpoint is three and a half. And from this midpoint, I'll go in by half of an inch. Now on the chest line, I'll divide my bust measurement into four and make a mark so go ahead and do the same thing divide your bust measurement into four and make a mark and now i'll be using my french curve to connect all these points from the shoulder to the midpoint we have on the armhole and then down to the point we have on the chest line so now we have our beautiful armhole curve there now i'm going to be adding my darts so i'll be using half of my nipple to nipple measurements i'm marking it on the chest line bust line and also on the waistline so i'll go ahead and make a straight line to connect all these points i just made now on the waistline i'm going to be taking in my dart so from the middle line we have here i'm going out on both sides by half of an inch from this half inch point i came out by i'm connecting all the way to the chest line just like this big this is because this is the back pattern if it was the front pattern we will be stopping on the bust line okay so now remember that this was our bust measurement divided by four here so now i'm going to add extra one and a half inch for stitching allowance now i'll come down to the waistline my waist measurement divided by four is right here i'll be replacing this dart that i have here it's one inch and just like i did at this top i'll add an extra one and a half inch for stitching allowance so i will go ahead and join the last points together like this just like you see me doing like this and i'll just smoothen this um o curve here so i'm just going to go ahead and make this place more visible like this so this is all for the drafting of the back pattern i'll go ahead and cut it out 
so now i'll go ahead and place this back pattern on my actual fabric and cut it out on my actual fabric so guys this is what it looks like after i was done cutting it out on the actual fabric my fabric is in a fold so the back pattern the center back is in a fold you can see that i only added stitching allowance to the neckline the shoulder and the end i did not add to the side because we already added stitching allowance to the side where we were drafting out this pattern so now i have another piece of fabric folded into two again this is for us to draft out the front pattern like i told you guys before i'm using an old dress for this particular tutorial so i don't have a lot of fabric to work with now you want to make sure that you have at least about five to six inches extra after placing your back pattern on the front piece so like i said before i don't have a lot of fabric to work with here so i will just work with what i have here so now what i'm going to go ahead and do is draw a straight line across before i go ahead to cut out this piece so i'll be using three and a half inches because this fabric i have is not like it's not much so i use three and a half inches to create a straight line all the way across this fabric now um i'll be using my ruler to connect this line so on this line is where we are going to be placing our back pattern like i said before make sure your own is at least five to six inches wide make sure it's at least five to six inches i'm using three and a half inches here because that's just what i have to work with here so i place the center back on the line i just drew and i'm just tracing the end and I'm going to also trace out the side. I'll trace out the armhole and I will trace out the shoulder. Now, the neckline is where we are going to have it different. Now, I'm going to mark the neckline here. I'll just mark where I have the neck width onto the front pattern. Now, we can actually remove the back pattern now because we've traced out every other part. Now, this is why I like to draft patterns directly on pattern paper. As you can see, this line is actually not very visible that I have here. But anyways, from the end of the front pattern here, I'm going to go up by 2 inches and make a mark. I hope you guys can see this mark. So, I'll be connecting this 2 inches mark that I came up by all the way to meet the neckline that we traced into the front pattern earlier so go ahead and do the same thing i'm going to go ahead and just connect this it's going to be like a v neckline so go ahead and connect your neckline like this and then i'm going to go ahead and cut it out so guys this is the front pattern and this right here is the back pattern so i'll go ahead and cut our lining pieces exactly as i have it here for these pieces so my loves this is the lining piece cut out for both the front and the back as you can see so i'm going to go ahead now and mark let me just arrange everything together this area here i'm just going to make a notch here so that i know where i will be stitching in my darts on the actual fabric so now we can remove the pattern paper and i'm going to go ahead and join my pieces with the lining so i'm going to go ahead and place my fabric and the lining together right sides facing each other like this and I'm only going to be stitching down the sides. So I'll stitch on the sides for the back pattern. And for the front pattern as well, I'll place the, uh, the lining and the actual fabric. Make sure they are right sides facing each other. You don't want to stitch the front and back together. So place them together like this. And I'm just going to go ahead and also just stitch the sides. I'm not going to be stitching the neckline or anything, just the side. Also, I'll go ahead and stitch my darts on both the front and the back patterns so guys now for the sleeve i already drafted all my sleeve using the pattern i drafted in one of my old videos the link to the pattern drafting for the sleeve will be in the description box now before cutting out my sleeve i folded in about one inch of um, my fabric up before placing the sleeve this one inch i folded up is going to be for me to fold in the ends later so we need stitching allowance at the end so i just went ahead to fold it all before cutting so i will head over to the sewing machine now and fold up these ends of course i'm going to stitch it down like this and then fold it up as well now this is it for the front pattern after i was done stitching down just the side and stitching my darts i've done the same thing for this other side as well so these are the two front pieces right here you can see the v neckline now this is the back piece i have gone ahead to stitch in the darts as well and you can see that i ironed out every single piece 
so now i felt like i needed to cut away from the front neckline because we're going to be having a band so i just cut out about two inches away just watch how i'm cutting it i am not going to cut it all the way to the top of the neckline so i just took some inches away from the end but i did not get to the top of the neckline because if you cut it all the way to the top of the neckline it's going to make the neckline wider in front so i just trimmed off this excess from the center front and this end here i just decided to make it straight so now this is what i have for my back and my front pieces so the front is going to be placed on the back like this so i'm placing them right sides facing each other as you can see you can see it still overlaps a little bit so by the time we add our band it will be even more obvious now i'm going to go ahead and join the shoulders so as you can see they are all placed together right sides facing each other like this so i will use the lining of the back piece to cover up every other thing so i'll turn it make sure you're turning it the way you see me doing like this because this is quite tricky but if you do it like this it's actually way like final by the time you're done stitching this down so i'm going to go ahead and just pin this area down this shoulder area down before i head over to the sewing machine to stitch it down because if i leave it like this i'm actually going to get confused by the time i get over to the sewing machine so i'll head over and stitch this area down if you're done making that stitch and you open it up you're going to see that the back looks really neat i've not even stitched it down right now this is just me holding it with my pins and you can see how nice it looks so let me just show you guys with the second part just in case you did not get it before so you're going to place the front and the back shoulder area right sides facing each other like this all four pieces together and you're going to pick one of the lining pieces and use it to turn everything over like this so i'm also going to go ahead and just pin all of these together and then i'll head over to the sewing machine and make my stitches guys just take a look at how nicely this is looking can you see how nicely it looks after i was done stitching it down so now i have already gone ahead to fold the ends of my sleeve like i said i was going to do so now we are going to go ahead and stitch this to the actual fabric you can see where i stitch it down here so i will just make notches at the middle of my sleeve now the iron i already have here has already given me that middle point but let me just make a notch here so i'm going to be placing the top of my sleeve cap this point where i have my notch on the middle of my armhole here so i'm just going to pin it down and i'll continue to just arrange my sleeve into the armhole and pin it all the way around and then we'll go ahead and stitch this down on the sewing machine so i'll go ahead and stitch it down here and i'm going to also repeat the same process with the other sleeve on the other side so guys the sleeves are fixed now as you can see so i'll turn everything over to the wrong side like this I'm going to turn everything over to the wrong side and I'm going to go ahead and stitch down the sides from the sleeve all the way to the end here and I will have to take my body measurements for this. So guys, I am done stitching it down on both sides as you can see. Now the next thing, the next step is for us to put the band around the neckline. Now for the length of your band, you have to measure around the neckline, all the way around the neckline and what i have here is just long enough to go around and for the width i have five inches which i folded into two so by the time i stitch this with an extra half inch my band will be about two inches around the neckline so i'm just going to place the band like this all the way around and i'm going to head over to my sewing machine and just stitch it all the way around with half of an inch so guys after making my stitch this is what it looks like so you can see how neat the neckline is looking now the next thing is for me to add the peplum to the end of this top this peplum was a tutorial that i posted in my last video so this is the thumbnail just in case you are yet to see it i would advise that you go ahead and check out this tutorial so that you'll be able to make this flare now i'm going to be placing this flare all the way around the waistline of my top so as you can see i'm just arranging it and i have some excesses so when i'm stitching this together i am going to make tiny pleats to make up for the excess 
that I have there. So I'll just go ahead and stitch these around the waist. So guys, this is what my peplum top looks like after I was done making it. You can decide to have a button in front just to cover it up here just before you go ahead and tie it up with your rope. That is optional. Um, so I went ahead to just fold in a rope. My rope is about 2 inches wide. So whenever I wear my blouse, I'm just going to tie this around the waistline. Okay. So now this is basically all for the making of this top. And this is what it looks like after I was done making it.